Hey everybody, welcome to the podcast. As always, we're here with Paul and Seth. We're here from Learn From Us. Thanks for joining us on YouTube. Uh, this is pretty incredible, Paul. We're here for the first time. This is actually awkward that we're just standing here. We're not sitting. <laughs> um, we are here in front of Paul's new flipboard. And uh, we get a lot of feedback on the podcast about how Paul runs through numbers. And as stupid as I am, I try and say slow down. But this gives us a true chance to let Paul show his chops in terms of how he monitors a business, the health of a business, and where they're at. And one of the hottest topics we've ever had, of course, is tef Tefla. Tefla. <laughs> Tefla. So, um, hot topic. Great hot topic. Start. Every time we, we talk about Tesla on the podcast, we get a lot of views. So um, Paul's been talking about the overhypingness of Tesla for years now. And so we want to show his thoughts. So Paul, take it away and tell me what you think about this company. So I think it's good to look at this as well as another company maybe that's more cash flowing. But when I look at companies, I look at them and their financial statements, which 99 point whatever percent of even professionals don't do. It matters to me to see what I'm buying in terms of cash flow, profit, revenue, all these things. So, you know, everybody looks at the, it's the stock price first. I never look at the stock price. That's irrelevant to me. That's, well, the, that's the only thing I ever look at. Of course. But what does 609 mean? Uh, it means it's down from 900 a couple weeks ago. Okay, but what are you buying for 609? Um, as I've said before, I'm buying a company that I really believe in, that I really love, that I drive, and it used to be 200 bucks last year. All right, so what I do is I look at the market cap. 112 billion. Okay, so this says, this is what the company is currently worth if you bought all the shares in the market right now, it'd be worth $112.3 billion. So I'm looking at saying, if I'm buying a piece of this company, it's equivalent to me buying the whole company. How many shares are there? Well, whatever 112 billion divided by 609 is. Oh, that's how many shares exist? Yep, that's in this how many world. shares outstanding there are right now. And how does that, who determines how the number of shares that exist? Well, the company will do things like they'll issue more shares to finance things and things like that. They'll buy shares back. Theoretically, if the price is under value, they should be buying the shares back. But either okay. way, 112 billion is what I'm looking at the company for. So then another thing I look at immediately is their PE ratio very quickly. Now, it doesn't have anything here. Why is that? PE ratio is price. To earnings ratio. Price to earnings. So it's the stock price divided by the earnings per share or the total market cap, which is the total price of the company, divided by total earnings. So for this to be non existent, it means either the price is zero or the earnings are zero or less than zero. Okay. So I, the company was, currently makes zero money. What were you gonna say? Well, I was about to be really confused already. Exactly. It's because the earnings are zero. They're less than zero, they're negative. Okay. So I can look at that and go, okay, does that mean I'm not gonna buy the company? No, it just means it's a, it's a concern of mine, okay? So what I immediately go to is the financials. Oh, I have to go off this. Try to get it queued up. Uh... Oh, don't save. Okay. So okay. this is the income statement now. Now to normal people, this looks really confusing. It does look it's confusing, but taxes. it's not confusing. I want everybody to think about this like their personal life, right? We've talked about this before. I want to talk about this like everybody, like it's in your personal life, things like that. So we look at one thing here, operating revenue. Okay, so the operating revenue last year, $24.58 billion in revenue. So I'm gonna look at this and go backwards and see how it's done over time. So going back, it's grown quite a bit. In 2010, the company did 116 million and today they're doing 24.5, 24.6 billion. That's a huge jump. Okay. That's a positive. Sounds great. We like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then I go to the gross profit. Now gross profit is, gross profit is how much money is it going to make, does it make on its every unit sold? Every unit that sells, how much more money does it add to the company? So you're saying per car. Per car. It's okay. not bottom line, it's per car if I sold one extra unit. So what you do is you take four billion, which is the gross profit divided by their revenue of 24.6. Can somebody four, tell me what that is? Billion, it's roughly 16%, is that what it is? Four billion Just do four by divided by 24.6. Divided by 24.6. 16%? 16 16.2, did you do that in your head? Yeah, 16.2%, okay. So I'm gonna look at this gross margin and determine. Tell me what that means. Gross margin is the, pro, the, the margin on every extra unit that's sold. They, they sell a car, they make 16% on the return. That's essentially, what the 16% of the price of the car is pro, it goes to the profit. Okay. Okay, so every dollar they sell extra, 
16 cents goes to the bottom, it goes to the company in profit. That car direct costs were 84% of that revenue. Oh, so every dollar they put into the company, they only get 16 cents back. Every dollar they sell, every dollar they sell, extra dollar they sell, is about 16 cents of that as profit. How does this compare with other Great question, and that's what we're gonna look at next. So I, I use this as a, okay, I put this in the back of my head, 16%, doesn't seem high, doesn't seem low. I have to compare this to other car companies out there. That's the important part here. I skip that, I, I do that, I just wanna know what that's in. And I'm also gonna look at the past and see how it compares. Now, you can do this for every single year. It'll probably end up being around the same number. If it's not, if there's big fluctuations, I need to understand why that is. Maybe they, if, if, if the profit margin goes lower, I wanna sit there and say, wait, what happened that made the margin go lower? Did it go higher? What happened? Is this a long-term thing, short-term thing, et cetera? We have to understand these things when buying a company. The earlier the company, I would assume the lower this number is. Um, I would assume, I think that's a good assumption to make. That's a good assumption to make because as to they get bigger, the cars, yep, and, they're, and, they're gonna, and they're gonna probably buy better. As they get bigger, they're gonna get better deals on equipment. Are there any uh, warning flags yet that you see why Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Is 16 a nice number for a car? I don't, I do know, but I'm gonna pretend like I don't know. Okay. I, as of right now, I'm gonna look at other car companies as a comparison. What about other businesses you have? Is 16%? Um, that's about in line. I, I mean, nice. you know, it's fine. A healthy business might be 16% return? Um, depends, listen, I, I can't, depends if it's service oriented or manufacturing. Manufacturing, it seems pretty decent, a little bit low, nothing great, but a car business, I would imagine to be lower than most manufacturing. Okay. For a service business, that's very, very low. Like a company like Microsoft probably has, I don't even know what Microsoft says, but I gotta think they're north of 40% or pretty high to it. Google's probably even higher. Okay, keep going. I then go to net income. This is the profit of the company at the end of the day. What's that number right there? Minus $862 million. Can you point in the last 10 years when this number was positive? So last year, minus 976, minus 1.9 billion, minus seven, almost 700, minus 900, minus 300. No. It's okay, they've lost money every year. How does that, how does a company exist? You're gonna laugh when I say this. That doesn't concern me as much as it would concern a lot of people. This is a fast growing company. They probably have a lot of costs in here about advertising, growth, things like that. This in and of itself is a concern but I can look past it if I see the right story, okay? okay? Here's where it might get a little complicated. I look at this and think to myself, okay, am I excited about this? No, if this was flat, if these revenue numbers were flat and this was this way, I wouldn't even go further, I'd, cl I'd close this out. You're done. I said, listen, these guys can't make money. But here, with such a rapid, rapid growth, I gotta think to myself, okay, there are costs in here that have to do with growth. So this is the gross revenue went from 116 million to 24 billion in 10 years. In 10 years. Seems like a massive. Oh, it is massive. It doesn't seem like it, it is massive. Okay. These are also massive losses. Yes, But the losses, the losses, but let me ask you a question. If I did the numbers right here, and I realized in these, in these numbers right here, there was $5 billion in one-time costs that they're not gonna have ever again. Looks, I'd be pretty happy. Okay. Yeah. Based on the revenue number. Like starting a new car, whatever. Line. Well, when it, when it, building these factories they're building. These okay. Giga factories, all that stuff. I see. Now, here's where I'm going to sit there and say why this matters. I'm not going to look at the balance sheet quite yet. What I'm going to do is now I'm going to go back to this number, this first page. 150. $115 billion company. It just went up 16 bucks? Yeah, 15 bucks. <laughs> you saw me do the double take? Yes. <laughs> now I wanna sit there and say, okay, where does this compare to other companies? 115, the market cap of 115 billion. Now thanks to the people at Y-Charts. Oh, these. Um, Benchmarks? Yeah, but General Motors. Okay. Look at General Motors here, everyone. <laughs> $35 billion. $35 billion market cap. Versus 115 for Tesla. Versus 115. So, Tesla does 25 billion in revenue. General Motors to have one third the value. Should do eight, eight billion. Let's see what General Motors um, revenue is. Last year, General Motors did 
137 billion dollars in revenue. What did Tesla do again? 24.5 billion. Something's wrong. So immediately I go, hang on a second. So, so then, but wait General a second. Motors does a hundred billion more dollars. Yet yep. their stock is a third of the price. No, now more, more than their gross third. profit is about ten percent. Their market cap is fourteen billion on one hundred and thirty on one hundred and thirty-seven billion. Fourteen divided by one thirty. It's like ten point something, whatever it is. Ten point two. Ten point two percent. So it's higher for Tesla, guys. That's an easy number. Please well, I mean, impressed. just like. It's it's I'm coming it's from a, higher. I, I don't think any of this is I have I don't know a single human being who will or ever open up one of these financial statements. Correct. And this is why I'm trying to teach this, because this is what you're doing. If you went and bought a company in whole, that's Absolutely. what you're doing when you buy a stock. You're buying a piece of a company. You have to assume you're buying the whole company. So here there now Tesla's gross profit is much higher than General Motors. Say that again. Sorry. Tesla's if you remember Tesla's gross profit was sixteen point two percent. Yes. General Motors is 10.2, significantly higher. Yeah. But I look at that 6% extra and go, okay, on 24 billion, 6% extra is a roughly billion and a half dollars. Okay, it's still 137 billion in revenue. At this point in the look, I'm done. I'm just like, yep, not even looking at this company anymore. But for the sake of everybody here, I'm gonna go explain further what I look at, or we should just look at another company. But I immediately am done on Tesla right then and there. I think to myself, okay, if it was selling for 20 billion versus 115 and General Motors at 35 billion, okay, let me figure out if there's a growth story here that I can get behind. All right, maybe there is, because growth is important. Growth, you should overpay for growth. We overpay for growth all the time because, not overpay, you should pay more if there's gonna be more growth. You shouldn't just look at the in, at the in place income. Just like when we buy apartment buildings, when we renovate them, what are we buying? We're buying the future growth of the rents. Mm -hmm. No different. But when we're so out of whack here, that on the same numbers, essentially Tesla would have to be how big to to be to, to to justify their current size. It's just not imaginable. Compare this to buying a home in your neighborhood. Oh, gee, I mean, it's like buying a piece of land for the full price for three times more the value of the home without even building the home yet. It's that astronomical. Yeah, it's astronomical. I mean, it's insane. And anybody who argues otherwise, oh, it's a growth story. Okay, it's a growth story, but they're already three and a half. They're already three and a half times bigger than General Motors in terms of market value, but they're one fifth the size. So you say this too is they they don't have much room to grow. Like to justify, they have to, yeah, they, it's for them to justify this current in place revenue, the current in place market cap, they have to be essentially like thirty times larger, and they're not going to be a trillion dollar company. That's the issue we have. So immediately at this point, I'm done. I'm, I'm closing up shop. This all takes me about two minutes because I can just look really quickly and I'm not mm -hmm. saying it as pat myself on the back. It's just, I'm accustomed to it. I look at these key numbers and go, not even wasting my time. Can you pull up Ford real quick? And, yeah, let's pull up Ford. F. Ford has dropped a lot. 23 billion 23 market billion. cap. Tesla's 115 billion market cap. Uh, yes. How is that possible? They have like a. They Revenue? just produced their first millionth car, by the way. That news came out today. Oh, really? One million cars. And their revenue is 100. They actually have more revenue than, than GM. $155 billion in. Is this what revenue? Yearly revenue? Yeah, yearly revenue. Ford makes $155 billion a year. Yep. Now, granted, their, revenue, their profit number last year was abysmal, but I'm sure there's probably one time charges in there or something. So I would go in here. I mean, they've fallen a lot. This has been a struggling company. Oh, fuck. I'm still getting used to this. Um, so I look at these financials. They have, but look, last year they made 3.7 billion, 7.7, 4.6. So if you guys look at this, this is this is immediately goes, hey, what's going on here? 47 million, 3.6 billion, 7 billion, 4.5 billion, 7 billion, 1 billion, 12 billion. 20 billion right here. I think there was some sort of big charge. They, they took 20 a 20 billion in 2011. So I see a, a lot lower profit. I go into these numbers and go, okay, where was the big charge here? So I'm going to compare year to year. I'm like, okay, revenue is about the same. No, that's low. Uh, no, no. Oh, there we go. Which one? Circle it. Um, I missed something up here because I'm looking at it going, what the? What, what am I missing here? So this is about the, I mean, it's, it's not like it's that big of a difference. I guess it adds up. 
No, you're right. 500 million versus three, 3 billion. Oh, right here. Other income and expenses. Last year they had 1.6 billion other income expenses. Here they lost 974. That's oh. a $2.5 billion difference right there. Right here, yeah, so that right there is a huge number right there. So I wanna understand what this is. So then what I would do then is go to their, I would go to the SEC website. You're better at this than I am. Mm. I go to the SEC website and I would type in. Well, what is that? SEC Security Exchange Commissions, the guys who didn't uh, figure out Madoff ever. Google.com. Google. You're good. There we go. <laughs> I would look up Ford 10K. Four. Go back a little bit. I don't know. You got four. Try it again. Uh oh. Uh oh. You fucked this up. Okay, go. I'm the worst. So, what this is, it's a, it's, it's, it's a document that Ford will put out every year. Oh, that's 2017. Mother F. God damn it. There's 18, 19 cent. This is a document that's going to put out. It's going to explain every single line of the financial statement. Then I'm going to go look at these documents and I'm going to go read those lines and find, find out what the reason for those charges are. And it's my job. Then to, you got to remember people, companies will manipulate numbers. How so? They'll sit there and put something in as a, if they have a good profit, they'll put it as a normal operating profit. It's your job to sit there and determine, is this really pertinent to the business? Is the one-time charge really a one-time charge? I remember years ago as an example, um, I had a property manager who, a third party manager who would always put carpet as a capital expense, which most people would say yes. But we found that we were changing carpet on every single time somebody moved out. And I said, no more. But they were making their lumbers look better saying, whoa, 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 that's not an operating cost. That's, an ex that's a capital improvement item. That's an investment in the property. But I'm doing it every single year. It's a one time, it, it's an ongoing recurring cost. Mm -hmm. So that's things like that you have to go read. These documents are 100 plus pages. I'm just getting into reading these documents through the tutelage of Gary, a friend of mine. These are very thorough. It takes a lot of understanding, but when it looks at Tesla, but my job is, my job when I, when I do all this, is to start in a very 500 foot view. My job is to start all the way up here and go work my way down to buy. All along the way, I could be buy, I could be sell, 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 sell. Your job in investing is to figure out the reasons to, to not be buying. And if you can't find out the reasons that you get closer and closer and closer, you're probably gonna buy. Tesla, I figured it out right here. <laughs> I just said, yep, done. Like it was so obscene to me. Now keep in mind, I could be wrong on Tesla, but if I have 100 Teslas, I'm gonna be right on them 99 times. And I'm gonna lose all my money those 99 times. It's not gonna make up for the one time it does well. That's the way I look at investing. Nobody ever talks about their big losses, but everybody's so quick to talk about like, te I look like at Tesla going, no, it's a no brainer to me. Like it's not even like anybody who, if anybody looked at me and said, it's a value play, I would just laugh. It could end up looking like a value play later because you look at hindsight and say, look, it became the biggest car manufacturer in the world and wiped everybody else out. And it's the only one that sells cars. Is that likely? No. No. So that's the way I look at it. There'll be other buys out there that are better. In general, the auto business, I don't really like very much. I just don't like the union costs. I mean, I look at 16% and I look at 10%. Like we didn't look at what Ford, what's Ford's operating margin? Kill it down here. God, how do you know this better than me already? Mm. Gross profit, 21 on 155. Do you want me to do that one? 14%? 14%? Yeah. Can somebody gonna verify that? 21 on 156, it's like four, a little, yeah, it's around 14%. 156? Yeah. 13.4. Oh, off. You, you fool. Off. 13.4. So it's better than GM, mm -hmm. but this it's not is, as good. This is Ford. And this is only one year. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna download all this data and I'm gonna do the equation to see what it averages. I wanna see about, like the other day we looked at um, Walmart. Walmart's always 25%. That's essentially what it always is. But my job is to figure out what this gross profit margin number is and see if it's consistent and why. It looks like their revenue has been pretty consistent going. It has been very consistent. 155, 160, 156, 151, 149. You want to see a very beautiful um, financial statement? Yeah, let's close with this. Show me a very, very healthy company that you love. I, I, not one that I'm buying right now, but one that I love. Their financials. Microsoft or Google or something like that, or even Facebook. I can't believe you love Microsoft. Oh, why wouldn't I? Um, because like, 
I look at an Apple store and there's like literally it looks like a concert and then Microsoft looks like it's dead it looks like uh, the sleep number uh, alright ready showroom what, what day is this what year is this uh, 2010 what's the revenue 62 billion 10 years later 125 billion they've doubled their company in 10 years yeah for such a company that was so big already and it doubled their revenue not even double their company they doubled their revenue look at this profit um, this is their profit how much profit's that? Forty billion dollars. I mean, look at this profit number. Used to be eighteen billion dollars. Yeah. So they doubled their revenue and over doubled their profit. So what is their uh, percentage of sales or whatever? Oh, the gross margin. Yeah. Oh, oh my lord! Look at that. Eighty-three billion on one hundred twenty-five. It's software. It's software. It, software costs nothing to reproduce. 66. 66 percent. 66 percent compared to Tesla. Yeah, but that's why software is a very competitive business because it's so <laughs> such high margin. A lot of people want to get into it, and it doesn't take. I mean, it takes. It's a little bit of money up front, but this is the whole point. Now, is Microsoft? I still think Microsoft's overpriced right now. So as much as I love the financials, doesn't mean that people always forget. I'm still not buying it because because it makes 40 billion in profit. <clears throat> And you have to buy the company for $1.2 trillion. $1.2. $1.2 trillion. That means I'm getting about a 4% return on my money. No thanks. Still over. But I can love the financials. I can love the business. But if the price is too high, F it, I'm out. Mm. This thing falls in half. Now we're talking. Daddy's going to be very happy. Okay, folks. If your mind was blown, mine was too. Paul, closing, closing thoughts? Uh, nothing. Stay away from Tesla. Uh, just look at a company the way you look at, if, when you're buying stocks, look at it as the way you're buying the whole company. And you have to look at financial statements. And these are things that I teach. I mean, I understand how these things work and I, I have a simple way of doing it, which is look at it as like your personal life. Money coming in, money going out, debt you have, etc. It's very simple. All right, follow us on Learn From Us podcast. We're gonna be doing way more of these, Paul. That was incredible. Way more. And uh, subscribe below on YouTube. Thanks, Paul. You're great.